Hey, here we are. We're making it through this thing day by day. Look at it. We're halfway through April already. As time goes by, we're getting more and more information on this SARS-CoV-2. We're learning more and more about it, the pathophysiology, how it creates the potential lethality in certain patients and ways to intelligently combat that as those people on the front line implementing different strategies out there are getting success and sharing their results with the rest of the world. We're able then to drift away from some of the, what we used at first, more of the generic, although effective, but generic immune boosting support and ways to avoid a virus and stay healthy. Now we're getting into more of the situationally specific things that you can do to hedge your bet against this thing. And that's exciting. That's where we're going to try to take it from here on out with you. The things that we know going into some of the, the finer details of it in ways that you can DIY if necessary, because Lord knows we're trying to stay out of the hospital, trying to decrease that burden. So they're saying if you could take care of this thing on yourself, by all means do so. We're trying to arm you with that knowledge and the action steps to hopefully hedge your bet in the right direction. One of the things that is pretty exciting and actually got us a little excited when we were reading about it and now even more amped because we're able to offer this now to patients who are interested in this. We can drop we can drop ship, excuse me, this kit to their house and they can measure for these things right here. Testing the blood, testing the blood for antibodies. You know, at first, a lot of the testing with this, uh, rushing to get it out, it's a swab. That's what you're reading about a lot of these, um, these drive-throughs right there. That's to see if you have the active infection or not. This one actually can bring a little bit of sense of confidence um, and control back to a situation where we seem like we have no control over the situation and we know that can breed stress, anxiety, the trickle-down effect from there detrimental to our mental health, which we know can then also have a bad effect on the immune system as everything's connected. So this can help kind of bring back some of that confidence in what steps we make going forward on an individual level as we try to ease back, ease back on some of the restrictions and, and bring people back out into society, ease back on the social distancing for those people, those lower risk populations. This is one way that you can look at a measure from your serum and see if it's okay. You're measuring for antibodies in the serum. This is key. This is key because it can show. We're looking at two different antibodies on there, an IgM and an IgG. These are two antibodies we often measure with people when looking for various sensitivities, whether it be to food or otherwise. Well, now we're able to test for this when it comes to the SARS-CoV-2. Why does this even matter? Are you talking about food or are we talking about a virus? Listen to why it matters, because there's an immune response generated just the same. Depending on which one is up, like we said, the IgM or the IgG, it can help you differentiate between, is this an active infection? Am I still contagious? Is this an active infection? Or perhaps even more empowering and really relevant because I've spoken with a number of different patients, a number of different family members who are like, how do I know if I've even had this thing? Because we know there's such a large population who are asymptomatic which can be dangerous because I feel fine, I feel great, but I have it, now I'm transmitting it. Or did I have it? I don't know if I had it. Questions that are going through everyone's mind, I'm sure. This is probably the most, the most powerful aspect of this test that I like right here. Because like I said, I've had patients who said, I think I had this in December. I think I had this in January. I was down and out. It was kind of like the flu, but it wasn't. Depending on which antibodies are up, if you see an elevation in the IgG antibodies, whether it's concurrent to the M, whether there's less IgM antibodies, that can be indicative of the fact that you were exposed to this and now you have the antibodies in your blood. Meaning, theoretically, you could be immune to this thing. Whether that's for the time being or long run, time will tell, but you're immune to this thing. Generation of these antibodies, this, this memory immunity, this, this B cell response, this is what people try to generate with a vaccine. This is what we talk about if it's herd immunity, when enough people get exposed that enough people are now immune to it, so they won't be infected, so they won't transmit it, so they won't carry it, so that so does stay healthy and less chance of lethality, which we're trying to lower those mortality numbers, obviously. Now that you know that, if you know that it's up and you, you seem like you have the immunity to it, now you can more confidently re-enter society. Get back out there and do your thing. And you don't have to worry as much, presumably. And this test, right off the bat, has a high rate, we'll say, of specificity and sensitivity. Um, these are the accuracy markers when it comes to a test. You know, trying to attenuate, lessen the amounts of false positives or even more dangerous, a false negative. So the, both of these, they were 95% and 91%. Um, 
between sensitivity and specificity, respectively. Last time I looked at the numbers, which is, it, it's pretty good. We want it to be, obviously, 100% would be ideal, but it, it's pretty good. You start to look at the numbers right there as far as accuracy. There's another reason why this can be empowering as well. As people scramble for solutions and ways to help those who are infected, those, those more susceptible and those compromised ones, um, or even as a prophylactic measure for people who haven't been infected, and again, maybe those more in need, compromised ones who we worry about. If you have somebody who has the antibodies in their blood, what they're doing is exploring something called convalescent serum, where that person, say I was exposed and I have a registered, recorded elevation in the IgG antibodies, meaning I'm immune to it. I can now share these antibodies. If it's somebody who has an active infection, we're looking at now taking that out of the serum, donating it, and giving some to them. They need a high volume, so that would only be a one-to-one -one as far as me to the person in need. As far as helping them block this thing and fight this thing and hopefully not succumb to it. On an even more positive note, if we talk about prophylactic and being proactive, potentially now we're looking at taking the elevated antibodies in someone and donating to people before the case, kind of prophylactically, in which case they don't need as much. Just like when it comes to supplementation, especially vitamin C, where we're talking about these mega doses of people. Um, that are having active infection. That's reactive, right? You're talking about preventative, a lot less is needed to kind of hedge your bet with that robust response. But that's just another example too. Vitamin C, melatonin, things like that, they've come to the forefront of things that can be useful for this. We're going to go into better detail with that stuff going forward and kind of get into the, the devil that's in the details right there to hopefully guide you in the right direction so you're making the right decisions and trying to stay as safe and as healthy as possible. But this testing one is a, a supreme option that made us very excited, so we wanted to share with you as soon as possible. Antibody testing, IgM, IgG, serum testing, a blood draw, and then it could help you make better decisions to know, do I have the infection? Did I have the infection and now I'm immune to it? Or does it look like I've not even been exposed yet? More information, more tools to make better decisions. Good luck. Feel free to reach out. We love this stuff. We love to talk about it. And like I said, we are offering these kits now as well. So hang in there. We'll get there. We're getting there. You know it.